You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, new breakthroughs in hair transplant surgery. With us, we have an expert on the topic. He is America's hair doctor. It is Dr. DeYarman. Dr. DeYarman, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank now, uh, you know, we say America's hair doctor, but this is all you do. I mean, you've been doing this for how long now? Over 30 years. 30 years. Now, yeah. why is it you like this uh, procedure hair because you know I t you know anticipating this interview I have buddies that are plastic surgeons and different guys they say I don't like this procedure it's tedious work why, why do you like doing it well hair restoration is, is a micro world I mean you're working with hairs one two three hairs at a time you're working under a magnifying lens to, to see your work and when you enter that work you're you're you know you're in your own world doing your own thing restoring something that somebody lost very appreciative of what you're doing, and the patients are always happy with the results. Is that right? How big, how, how popular of a procedure is it, by the way? Well, do you know any stats on that? Number one surgery for men, cosmetic surgery. Is that right? Right, right, because it, it starts at such an early age. You know, a man, no man looks at the mirror and says, God, I'm finally losing my hair, you know? <laughs> yeah, because I told you on the phone, I said, I said, but, uh, you know, not everybody's bothered by it. And that, that's how you responded. Exactly. And, and most men will tell you, I can remember years ago when Rogaine came on the market. And I was doing transplants. And I would try to get my friends, you know, you know why don't you do a hair, consider a hair transplant? And they'd say, well, I don't, it doesn't bother me. But yet when Rogaine came on the market, they the first guys asked for it, you know. I said, well, I thought you didn't matter. It didn't matter to you. Well, I could, if I could, you know, help a little bit. And you it. like Rogaine, right? I mean, I, I, I Well, I think anything that's legitimate. Rogaine, Propecia, there are new other drugs that we're using now that helps treat the problem. It should, all of it should be utilized. Okay, because you have a thick head of hair. Do you use some of that stuff on your hair? No, I don't. No, this is my own natural hair. And I used to have more. I could show you old photos of myself where my hairline was even lower. So, you know, we all lose hair as we age. Okay. It's just, you know, more severe and rap more rapid for some than it is for others. Now, we're talking a little bit about your bio, your background, your training. You've been doing this 30 years. And uh, you speak now, internationally, teaching other doctors some of the new techniques. Correct. Tell me about that. Well, I recently got back from a trip to, to Korea, Seoul, Korea. And I use a, uh, been using a product called PRP, which stands for platelet-rich plasma. And it's uh, basically, it was developed uh, for orthopedic surgery, it got over into plastic surgery, and then hair restoration surgery, we started using it. And it's, you're drawing the patient's own blood, spinning it down, getting the plasma with a high concentration of platelets. You inject these platelets in the area that you're doing surgery. Well, these platelets have a lot of growth factors, stimulate what we call annual genesis, you know, new circulation. Are there the stem area. cells in there? And some stem cells. Okay. And then, you know, you'll get a better outcome as far as your surgery is concerned. And what, more outcomes meaning what? More hairs faster, take? Faster heal. Heal, okay. More hairs grow in, and then more hairs grow in quicker than they normally would. Uh, I've, what about the redness that you get? The redness will resolve much quicker with PRP. You know, normally I would see redness last 10, 14 days. With PRP, I've seen it resolve in as little as five days. So you're teaching other guys how to do it. Now, you've been doing that for how many, how many years? Well, a couple years now? two years now for the PRP. So yeah. you use it on every procedure? Pretty much. I think it should be standard of care. You know, I had one patient that I couldn't do it on, and it was the Jehovah Witness. Okay. Because they're not allowed to do any alteration the blood, of okay. blood. And so I couldn't do it. But otherwise, everybody, you know, gets the PRP. And is this true, by the way, that very few guys in America, surgeons, doctors that are doing hair transplant, they're not doing this? No, no. I'm, well, I think in California, I'm the only doctor using PRP that I know of. Uh, there's probably a handful of us, maybe 10 throughout the world, that's doing it. And uh, in next September is our next meeting, our international meeting, and I'm going to talk on PRP again. The hair meeting with all the doctors. Yes. So yeah. platelet-rich plasma. I know they're doing that in facelifts and wound healing and things exactly, like that. Exactly, exactly. And, and when you can see the benefits, and, and you know, it's interesting. Every patient that I've done a second procedure on that the first time didn't have PRP, and the second time did, are amazed how much faster they heal, how much better the results were. So, so is this true, by the way? Okay, because we've talked before, that you put a certain amount of graphs in, you know, a, you know, a percentage take and some don't. Does this PRP make more last in there, stay in there? Or is it more about wound healing and, and downtime? I think it's 
both. I think you get better wound healing that shortens the downtime. And as far as the results are concerned, you know, it appears that we're seeing more hair grow in faster. So faster. But, you know, it's how do you judge this? Because in hair restoration, people say, well, how many of these hairs grow? How many that don't? You don't know because there's no scarring. There's no evidence. Oh, there's one that's grew. There's one that didn't grow. You know, it's, it's the illusion. And with PRP, I'm seeing the illusion of more hair. Okay, okay. Now you're using another product as well. Right. Now this I've been doing about six months, and it call, it's called A-Cell. And this is an extracellular matrix product, which means it, in, when the body is healing itself, normally in surgery, it, a scar tissue is created. With the extracellular matrix product, the body will recreate similar cells in the area, so there's less scarring. Uh, it's an interesting uh, video of the A-cell use where a man had cut, uh, cut off the end of his finger. And they treated the finger with A-cell. And not only did the A-cell uh, initiate the growth back of the finger, but it also, the fingernail grew back. So okay. It's pretty amazing stuff. So it's, it's, it's new. It's being used a lot in plastic surgery. And uh, so this is all for better outcomes. Exactly. Obviously, anybody watching this video, they're bothered by their hairline. So if you're going to do it, and, and so my question is, why, why aren't all the doctors doing it this way, by the way? I mean, it's not a lot of money. I mean, I, I guess, you know, you know, $600, dollars $1,500 to, to do it the right way. Correct. Is that right? Is that That's your feeling right. about it? Right, right. And, and you know, most people, when you explain and show the benefits, they, you know, guys always want the best. You know, you well, plus, not, you, know, you want to go back to work quicker. Exactly, well. exactly. Okay. Well, people don't want the problems. You know, I always amaze when, you, when I, people come in and you're trying to estimate how many graphs they need, and you say, well, I could maybe do it for $2,500, but 3000 would be better. They always want 3000 you know, they always want the best, the most. The 3,000. Exactly, exactly. So how often uh, do you do this procedure? I mean, you do this just about every day in your practice? Yes, we do, I do one patient a day and I, you know, five days a week. And, uh, you know, the patients get there at nine o'clock. It takes at least an hour just to prep and uh, lay out the, what you're going to do, uh, how many grafts you're going to do, how much donor tissue you're going to go. And then from there, it's, it's about five, six hours of time in the patients there. For the first four or five hours, they sleep. So they're, you know, they're not really aware of, of, of everything and they're very comfortable. Uh, and then the last few hours, they're watching television. Okay, now by the way, how much art is to this? That means the doctor's eye looking at it and deciding the hairline. Well, that's, you know, there's certain- I mean, in 30 years, I, I mean, can you look at a hairline and say, you know, this is, I know how to make this thing look natural. Yes, but I also use age to do this. Okay. You know, I, uh, I videotape it, I photograph it, I download it on the computer, I use Photoshop, add hair, you know, and educate the patient. You know, the patient will come in, especially the young guys, and they'll want a hairline, for example, way down here. And you have to show them that if they did that, they would look absolutely ridiculous. And so it's the profile shot is so helpful because you can see what you would look like from the side, realizing it would not, you know, it would be ridiculous if you did that.